to episode eight of Comics and Us. I'm TJ. And I'm Chris. And I'm Lumpy. And this is the review show that reviews comics chronologically, kind of. So we're going into Detective Comics number 33. It was released on November 39th. No, uh, November 39th. November 1939. And 1939. <laughs> it's 12 pages long, and it's called Batman Wars Against the Dirigible of Doom. So before we get into this one, we, we shit on the last one pretty much the, the whole time, but I just want to point out that we actually did like it. Yeah, <laughs> we that one was good. It, it was good. It was yeah. very comic booky, but I, I did enjoy that one. We didn't get into that at the end there like we should have. So I yeah. just want, we just want to throw that out there. So this is the start of Batman getting really longer because it's been 10 pages for a while, and now it's up to 12. Okay. And like the next... Yeah. I mean, the next, go ahead. But it's up to 12, but two pages are... You know, his origin story. So it's weird. Did they just add those two pages because of that? No, because three other than uh, two of the next three are also 12 pages. Oh, okay. Okay. I wasn't sure. Right. So the cover of this one has Batman flying into a car with a bunch of with two villains, I guess. Or he's it just terrorizing. Like jumped off that bridge. Or he's terrorizing two poor innocent people, one or the other. <laughs> I don't know if that. I didn't even notice that was a bridge, honestly. Yeah, it looks it's like a train, a, bridge, a or train bridge or something for sure. He's jumping down onto their car off the top of the bridge. It could be a tunnel for all I know. It is. It'll be a short tunnel, though, because you can see both sides of it. And there's a little park bench under it. Oh, yeah. And there's a tree behind it. I just said. So it's like a it's like a bridge in a park or something. Just a little picture. Oh, another thrilling adventure of the Batman. Okay. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have the picture of the Batman. I guess they only put the picture of the Batman up there when he's not on the cover. Just to make sure you know he's in there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we open with Batman flying a plane and looking at uh, the, dirge- the head dirigible of Doom. And then we get a flashback. So, of- good. did you know what a dirigible was? It's a blimp. Yeah, but I mean, I- I've never heard that word before in my life. I looked it up. Not ever, but I got it because I knew what it looked like. But yes, I, right. I never heard of that before. No, I, kn- I knew what it was. Okay. It does. I, I, I looked it up. It says any lighter than aircraft, both powered and steerable. That's what it says for a dirigible. So yeah, it's yeah. I think it's like That's, a different kind of blimp. Right. I just assumed it was a blimp because of the pictures in the drawing. So yeah, no, it, it's. I think it's a. It was a different variety. Of, I think it was like lighter and easier to use. Or, we get one panel to blimp, and it looks like a rocket ship right on the front page there. It's, That's because of the people <laughs> driving it. It's yeah. a dirigible of doom. The Batman Wars against the Dirigible of Doom. Yep. Yeah. Now, I will say one thing that makes this one a lot longer. It is 12 pages, but it's a lot wordier now. True. It does have Batman's origin story. Right. Right. The the first panel after the Dirigible of Doom, it says, Legend, the Batman, and how he came to be. Exclamation point. (laughs) Actually, there's not an exclamation point in mine. I'm not sure what it is. It looks like an exclamation point, but it could just be like somebody scratched their pen on the uh, thing. Yeah, mine has two lines under it. Mine yeah, two lines. lines. Yeah, the two lines. Anyway, so we get a backstory of how his parent, Bruce Wayne's parent, Martha and Thomas Wayne, are killed in an alley. And, you know, you get the classic scene yeah. where they're killed. Although I don't see the pearls in this one. Do I don't see any pearls. She does. But he does say... She has a necklace on. He does say he says, give me the pearls, but we don't see him, like, grabbing for the pearls and ripping them off like we see in every Batman story. Yeah. yeah. So, I want them to talk about, uh, then, of course, he swears that he's going to fight crime, and he goes around the world and learns how to be strong and scientific. You know, it's classic Batman, and then a bat flies through his window. He That's how he knows he wants to be Batman. It's where it all started. All the beats are there, you know, from the right. classic origin. But I want them to talk about the origin itself for a little bit here. This random criminal comes up and kills the Wayne. Do right. you guys like that it's a random act of violence just by some random dude? Or do you like the other origin where it's connected to something bigger? Random. Yeah? I like the random better. I don't think that, because if it, if it's someone that's connected to something bigger, like, say, the movie where it was the Joker, when he finally kills the Joker, that should be it. He should be done. Right. I agree with you. I think it's better if it's a random cr- act of yeah. r- crime of violence. Speaking of, he doesn't say pearls. He says, I'll, I'll take that necklace you're wearing. Oh, I thought he said pearls. Yeah, so it's not even pearls. Yeah, I might have so just, that's... 
I might have just implanted that in there. And That's been in our heads forever. <laughs> also, they don't name his mother. They just say Thomas Wayne and his wife and son were walking home from a movie. They don't name we've, her in this. We've already discussed We've already discussed this. That they weren't important. Women were not important in the thirties. <laughs> I guess not. I mean we know her name now, but they do not name her in this. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Right. Again, I just implanted Martha in there because I knew what the name was. Just like we know who the killer is, but they don't mention his name throughout the entire book at all. Right. Not at all. They do He's not just name a him. Random guy. Yeah. So uh how old do you think this kid is? When his mom gets killed. I never really checked out the age of Batman's when his well, parents how, get killed. How old do we think he is, or how old does he look? That's what I mean. Like, how old do you think? How old does he look in this? How old, He looks like he's 12 in this. I agree. Maybe. 12. 12 is about but, what I would say when I look at his drawing. But, so it says, it says 15 well, years ago, so Batman's around 27 in this, you think? Well, honestly, if, if we're going by what they probably intended, he's probably more like 8. You think so? Yeah, I think he's more like eight because I think that's what he commonly is. Like he's right around seven, eight when he's usually depicted there. And then the frame before, not the close-up frame where he looks like he's twelve, but in some of the other panels, he is looks smaller in frame and stuff. So he's probably around eight. Good call. Good call. I just googled how old was Bruce Wayne when his parents died. Uh, eight years old. Well, well there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I've been steeped in Batman probably more than you guys. I'm really into the lore of Batman. That's why I wanted to do a Batman podcast. Right. But, I mean, I didn't know the age, but I just guessed based on the panels. Right. So he's, but, what, 23? Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. too, for his, for early Batman, too. Yeah. So what I find funny about this backstory, right, is that he is having these flashbacks while he's flying a plane looking at this dirigible. Because they <laughs> show dirigible... And then they go into the thing, so you think it's like, oh, he's thinking about it. And then it goes into his backstory. He has auto He's like, yeah, and he's like, look at that blimp. That yeah. reminds me of something. <laughs> I don't not, get it. <laughs> I'm not saying he can't drive and it's distracting or that he even needs to stop it. Because all he knows at this point is it's just a dirigible, you know? It's just a blimp. Yeah, yeah so it's just a blimp. Like, do you I, think the nipple on the front reminded him of his mother? <laughs> They get something like he you know, it's kind of something he saw, and then well, I it's know. clearly a nipple on the front of the Daredevil. <laughs> well, here's my question: Is if Batman's just out for a leisurely fly in his bat plane? Right? Is he just cruising? Yeah. In the bat plane? dressed up. And I didn't everything. think about that. Well, maybe he's patrolling. He's patrolling. He maybe in the broad daylight. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Well, we find out. I don't even know if it's in this comic, but we do find out that he can he can hide his bat plane, so maybe that's what he's doing. I think it is in this one. Is it in this one? I think it is in this one. <laughs> you know, every time you mention the word blimp, it reminds me of the beginning of that awesome Batman, the animated series, the beginning of that, where the blimp's flying. You don't remember that? Oh my god. The opening, the blimps flying over Gotham and the music oh, playing, oh, it's the cool. the actual opening. Yeah, the anim animated series, the opening. Uh, the actual intro opening. Not, yeah. I thought you said that meant like an episode of it. But no, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah, the I opening remember. opening. Well, it's funny that you say that because they, for some reason, Gotham City always has blimps in it. Yeah, so there are blimps. <laughs> I don't know why they are. Gotham City is like surrounded with blimps. <laughs> like, if you ever played the um, Arkham games for Batman, I yes. did. And the re most recent one, Arkham Knight, there's blimps all over Gotham. It's like, why are these blimps around this city? Okay, I just pushed. <laughs> why does Gotham have blimps flying over it? And it says the Gotham City PD uses the blimp of Gotham City. As a surveillance dirigible utilized by the oh. Gotham City Police Department. Yeah, but why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. I mean, it's they're still there even in modern comics. Yeah. It, it's just strange. It is a cool um, visual, though, in the, in the animated series when the blimp flies over. It's really cool. I just realized that they're like a staple, staple for... I was just going to say, it kind of became a staple because of these older comics, I guess. Yeah. But this isn't even Gotham. At least no, I don't think so. I think it's Manhattan. It's New York. Are you sure? It says, Nightfall Bruce Wayne... Downtown Manhattan. Walks in crowded oh, yeah. streets okay. of 
downtown Manhattan. Well, what's he doing in Manhattan? I don't know, because in the next issue, and I'm going to spoil it right now, he's back and hungry right after the monk thing. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, it, uh, this one is just the interlude between another hungry story. You're right. <laughs> so I don't know how he got to New York because he puts his fiance on a boat by herself back home in the right. next issue. Yeah, yeah, and he's still hungry. So this must have been a story before that. This is just a back, you know. A... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so this blimp seemingly destroys Manhattan and kills thousands of people. Thou it says it. Yeah, buildings are toppling. And the rescue work is still going on. Thousands are dead. Yep, that's what it says. Ridiculous. These these guys have the came in and just killed a thousand people somehow. Right. With, with this blimp. And Bruce Wayne's apparently there helping. Yeah. So he's a good guy, I guess. And then it, he's helping in one panel. Next panel, he's home listening to the radio. What is pipe? Well, no. And if you look, oh, at that's that, right. If you look at the next panel, right after he's helping, he's still in a suit. And then the next panel, he's in a robe with a pipe. I see what happened. He got his suit off. He put his robe on, and then he slid his. He, speaking of, this is the first appearance of his sliding wall, by the way. And um, then he slides his wall, and he goes into his secret office with his, where he keeps his bat suit in his handy bat chest. Yeah, in his ba- in his pirate chest. He moved his pirate chest into the ba- secret bat room, too. <laughs> I thought his new thing was to hang it on the end of his bed. No, that's when he, get, when he gets lazy. He's like, ah, no one's going to find it. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty much standing up by itself in one comic book. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so he gets in his car, his ugly well, he f- red bed. He somehow f- finds out about Professor Carter Kruger from yeah. a newspaper clipping. That Yeah, I forgot. And that's and they crazy. already know he's working on a new type of death ray. Yeah, well, he's Batman. Yeah, but why don't they stop him now before he makes this death ray? Like, before they write that paper, just stop him. Well, maybe he was a, a, he's a foreign agent and they couldn't stop him and he just flew to blimp over okay. to America. Gotcha. That's, that's what I'm getting. Just based on his personality, we'll get to that. So you mentioned the car. Is the car changing? Is there a little black in the car now or is that a shadow? I don't know, but that, think... that gold grill in the front wasn't there before. Well, it's white in the one in the panel before it, and then it's gold when he parks it. So I don't know what's going on here. I yeah. think that's just shadowing. I don't think it okay. has black on it yet. I think that's just shadowing. But there is like some vents on the side now. There's like white vents. That, yeah, there, I see that too. There is no consistency with this car whatsoever. No, there it's really the most, isn't at all. <laughs> it is the most ever changing car that I've ever seen. Oh, you just wait. You just wait. <laughs> 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 anyway, Batman does his typical thing, climbs up to a second story window and goes through a window like he always does. Yeah, he hates doors. He's got a real problem with doors. <laughs> and now he's thrown his rope about 400 yards to this building, yeah. but he couldn't catch the he, thing in the last one. He couldn't catch the pipe in the last one, you're right. Well, he upgraded. That's why he, uh, that's why he upgraded. Don't, you know? is it, it looks like it might be hooked on to his um, batarang again, too. Yeah, I mean, he learned that last issue. It's yeah, so now he's using that. He's like, oh, this works. He's <laughs> Batman. So anyway, this is where we meet Professor Kruger. Is it Professor? I don't Doctor. know. He's a Napo- Dr. Kruger. He's a Doctor Kruger. He's in the Napoleon stand-in. He's got a Napoleon complex. He's small. He thinks he's Napoleon. Yeah. You know? He's dressed just like him, has his hair done like him, everything. So. Yeah. I gotta tell you, he's got some tricks, this guy. You know what? When he walks in and finds this guy with, with the Napoleon complex and his three guys, they say they're 2,000 strong awaiting for your command. Yeah. Yes. 2,000 strong? Uh-huh. I'm gonna bring that up later. Just remind me to bring that up later. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I was debating on what to do with the count. <laughs> so, anyway, he comes in, and I guess all of his Napoleon's henchmen disappears as Batman walks in and sees him sitting right. down. And then Batman just comes in, doesn't say anything. Oh, wait, no, he does. I'm sorry. He tells him he's going to stop him now. Yeah, he's going to stop him. Then Batman throws a batarang at him, but he's yeah. hiding behind a glass wall, right? He's a tricky guy. Yeah. He's so tricky, this guy. Yeah, glass wall. that. Somehow doesn't get broken by the batarang when it's breaking everything else. Okay, it's now I have a clear glass. Here, here's one of my questions. <laughs> I have a lot of questions in this one. So then a painting moves and an arm comes out. I guess it whacks Batman on the back of the head. I guess. Next thing I know, Batman's tied up. <laughs> yeah, they do not explain it at all. <laughs> I, this and is the a- guy reaching through the painting looks like he has a gun in his hand. It's hard yeah. to see what it is. He obviously I- hits Batman with something. 
I, at first, I thought the guy in the painting was Napoleon. I was like, how the hell did he get back there? Yeah, I thought so too, but then I noticed the red arm instead of the blue arm. So, it's Batman gets knocked out, I guess, he gets tied up, and then in the next scene, he's... Oh, oh wait, I'm sorry, because Batman has muscles of steel, apparently. Yeah, he rips the... They say that a couple of times, that his muscles are steel, he was able to flex out of them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And oh, then, no, no, wait, 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 wait. This is not the one with the muscles of steel, TJ. It says, as Kruger leaves, the Batman rolls over and draws forth a steel blade from his boot. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. It must have been the next one. Yeah, you read ahead. I know what you're talking about, or though. Or the one after. It's one of them, though. <laughs> and then he's free, but just in the nick of time, because boom. Yeah, Napoleon blows up his house. Yeah, blows up his... I mean, where did, how did he get out so fast? I don't know, but I'm, I just assumed because he blew up the house that none of his henchmen were in there. Now you made me forget this guy's name because you called him Napoleon so much. Now I don't even know his... Oh, Kruger. Dr. Kruger. Okay, <laughs> He's Napoleon. <laughs> anyway, Batman goes and finds one of Napoleon's henchmen. He scares him so much that he runs to Napoleon, so Batman follows him. And this is where I wrote down the bat plane with exclamation mark because it has a bat's head on it now. Oh, yeah. yeah it does have a, a sudden, bat's head. It is a bat. Yeah, no, it looks- Like a full bat's head yeah. at the front yeah. of it. It looks like an actual bat plane now. And then right. I guess the artist got tired of drawing, so he just colored black smoke all uh, ink blots over the bat plane. Wait, no, this is what I was talking about before. The Batman breaks a glass vial and a thick black smoke peer, peer, pours forth. Batman has disguised himself as a rain cloud. Yeah, I know. It just looks like he's, <laughs> the artist got bored and decided to, to just black out the bat plane. It, just it be- is just scribbles of black ink. I could, yes. really... <laughs> I could draw that. That's how yeah. bad it is. Yeah, it's not great. It's Well, it's smoke. I don't know, but it's not great. You're right. <laughs> it looks like he took a pen, a black pen, and just decided to scribble it out. <laughs> and then a black cloud. Yeah, it looks like rain. That's what the two henchmen say. <laughs> yeah. No, it's... I, I know this is a comic book, and but this is bothering me. It's a helicopter. I don't care what you say. It's a helicopter, right? Well, it's a gyro. Right. But that propeller is spinning. That thing has got to be super loud. It's got to be loud, and it wouldn't blow the uh, the, the smoke away that's screaming yeah. the bat plane. Exactly. <laughs> and yet these guards know nothing. It's like, oh, look, a black it cloud. Has giant. He shut down the propeller, and he's letting it glide on the wings. That's what it is. That's why he has those huge wings for gliding. It won't stand quietly. still while it's gliding. Where's it going to glide to? It's just gliding around in the air. It just in circles? Power. He's got to sit so it glides in we circles? We had this conversation in one of the previous episodes. When you glide, you go downwards. You don't go <laughs> up without air air currents pushing you back up. And it there's no air the current. the wind and goes there, up higher, just like flying a kite. There is no way that thing is light enough to catch an air current. It's magic. Okay? <laughs> yeah, it's magic. Oh. All I know is it looks like rain. That's all it I know. It does look like rain. Well, apparently. <laughs> Scribbly rain. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Batman uses another gas vial to knock out the Oh, cars. my God. How many gas vials? Like, this This is his only... He's got a rope, a batarang, and a gas vial. That is it. Yeah, I I, I didn't keep track of the number of gas vials, so... We should have, but it's, yeah, it's too late now, because it's, like, up to 100. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So... so go, go ahead. ahead. Well, so he, the Batman, gas vial did the trick. That's all. It knocked out a couple guys, and then Batman pulls out a gun. That's what I was, was going to say. You. Here goes the gun again. But he only pulls it out and points it, and then it's gone. Well, I think he got bazookaed. Yeah, he something, does get a something blast. Boom. Because all we see is a boom, but it's a big boom, so I'm assuming it has to be high explosive. Oh, he he shoots okay. it. Because it says, well, here goes. Oh. I hope I don't get blown up. But he shoots it, and then That's it says, those ray is. machines are destroyed now for the dirt. Uh, so he shot the. Uh, that was I see now. Uh, this is why we we have to talk this out because we would never knew that. I would have just thought somebody shot at him. Yeah, but then he, no, he a- destroys the machines. That's the explosion. Right. Okay, gotcha. But now. then Batman flies out, I guess, and then suddenly in the next panel, he's on the ground with an axe trying to chop this steel dirigible. I don't think that's gonna work. Uh, it doesn't matter. Was there just an axe laying late. around? Did I don't he know. pull that? Did he pull that axe out of his belt? <laughs> It says he picks up an axe. Yeah, it does say he picks up an axe. But they have an axe just lying around outside the yeah. schedule. So now the guy jumps out, shoots Batman, right? Napoleon comes out and shoots Batman. Yes, because there's blood. Okay, Batman falls to the ground right in front of him. 
He walks over and says, he is finished. Batman's dead. Right. And then he turns around to grab this machine and tells the guard to stay and watch him. Right. And then Batman is on the ground. Okay. So now I don't understand. All right. Well, we'll, we'll keep going. But And so <laughs> Napoleon shoots Batman and Batman is disintegrated. Yes. But no, he wasn't because Batman managed to switch out their bodies and when? change clothes. When? 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 <laughs> well, no, the biggest, the, my bigger problem is not when or how it happened is that Batman knocked this guy out and pretty much killed him by disintegration. Oh, sure. Yeah. But what I'm saying is he did, he shoots Batman. Okay. He had a, a bulletproof vest on. Is that what they're trying to say with that one? I guess. No, no, he's bleeding. Yeah. There's blood yeah, on the ground. Just a few flesh wounds. I lost some blood, though. But it was, thank God, it's a good thing the bulletproof vest stopped those bullets. <laughs> yeah. So Batman falls on the ground. He's laying there bleeding. Did, did the Napoleon guy leave? Yeah, to go get this mirror. He went thing. to get the death ray. So yeah, Batman just knocks the guy out and lets him get killed then. Yep. Sets him up to get disintegrated. So that definitely goes on the count, right? Yep, that's death count number eight. Yeah, okay. Batman killed another guy. Yep, that's eight for sure. And then Batman's in his plane. And this is where he gets all science and makes some kind of foam. And Mysterious the- chemical. Was sprayed over the bat plane, which they call it the bat plane, by the way. Yeah, I know. It's not a plane. <laughs> it's not a plane at all. But yeah, so it sprays this so that the death ray doesn't work on his plane. But wouldn't it still work on him? He's not exactly not exposed. He's inside the plane, but there's no, like, cabin. He's sitting outside. Yeah, it's open outside. to the sky. Yeah, yeah. And then the dirigible returns to kill more people. And then Batman crashes his bat plane into the blimp and it explodes. Yes. So, <laughs> we could take this to mean a couple different things. One, that there are 2,000 men on that ship, Blimp, and Batman just killed 2,000 men. Oh, I didn't even think of that. We could take that, and we could even add all the debris that falls down to the Earth that lands on people and possibly kills them, so it could be hundreds more there. Could be hundreds more. But, I'm going to be generous here and say, since we only seen a certain amount of guards... There's only about three that were on there. Okay. Wait, they do some say something later about the, the other guys, too, so we'll talk about that later. So, I'm going to assume there only, was only two or three other guys on there. So, okay. we're, gonna, we're just going to bump the death count up to ten at this point. Well, he didn't kill the Napoleon guy, so just the guards. Yeah, no. Right, I'm just the three just, lieutenants. We're, we're just so far. This, we're giving him three guards that he killed in that plane. Okay. Not okay. the 2,000. Right, okay. Because someone had to at least be driving. We know that. Right. And you figured you have to have a mechanic on there and okay. at, at least maybe a captain or something, a lieutenant. So we're giving it three. So Batman parachutes out of the bat plane before he crashes it into this blimp, mm-hmm. where we see Napoleon flying his own plane. Right. Yeah, a little biplane. Batman hooks onto the plane. Napoleon <laughs> tries to shoot him. And then I... What I don't know what's happening here. The shot Batman, goes wild. And Batman, yeah, Batman gains the wing. Him. Batman gains the wing and then he gasses him. Uh, then uh, the Napoleon guy is going straight into the water and Batman dives off at the last second into the water and lives. And then in the next panel, it's just a few hours later, Bruce at the home of Bruce Wayne, the body of Kruger was re- recovered. So dead Kruger. Dead, dead Napoleon, which brings this up to 11 death camps. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, all right, you go ahead. What were you going to say about the, it said later, the, about the other the latest, The latest dispatches report, the capture <laughs> of the entire Scarlet Army. So the rest of the thousand guys all got captured, I guess. Two thousand. Yeah, <laughs> two thousand. All two thousand of them got arrested. Okay. Yeah, they're all, ca- I, get that. I guess they just opened a whole prison for them guys. I guess. Yeah, so, but that, that means they weren't on the, on the dirigible, so we're good with that. <laughs> Yeah, right, okay. so you don't know how many were killed, but anybody who wasn't killed is in prison. So, yes. yeah. so we're going to, like I said, we're going to be generous and make it only three. Right. Because there had to be at least someone flying that plane. And they're not, at least. And they're not shy about killing people. Right. If there was 2,000, you might have seen them all go floating down the river. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Or falling into the city. True. And then it ends with the Batman appears only in Detective Comics. Don't miss an issue of the... Thrill a new character in his amazing adventure. Right. So, uh, you want to hear the appearances? Yes. We got individuals. Batman. Thomas Wayne, first appearance. Martha Wayne, first appearance. Listed here is Joe Chill for his first appearance. Carl Kruger, 
apparently wasn't a good enough bad guy, only appearance. And then well, I guess he killed him off at the end. Yeah, they kill him off at the end too. Well, that doesn't always mean that either. <laughs> um, then we got—I uh, guess they were the three henchmen: Bixley, Ryder, and Travis. Yeah, they were the three in the beginning. But I would say you're right. That doesn't always matter. But they specifically say, and the body of Kruger was recovered from the True. water. True. So you know, it's kind of hard to dispute that one. Right. Yeah, I agree. But I've seen it happen. <laughs> I've still seen it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen dead people come back in comic. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that one was probably the most nuts one we've had. The, the body count in that one's ridiculous. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. He didn't snap any necks, though, where you could audibly hear him snap necks. Well, though. not just Batman's death count. The bad guys apparently killed thousands of people, too. True, true, true. I don't even think of the good people's death count. Yeah, it's true. And Batman uses a gun again. Honestly, right. though, Kruger's probably got the highest death count of any Batman villain. So yeah, far, he killed thousands no in the first uh, page. Well, you know what? I, I, I'm Joker probably got him beat after all these years. Yeah, yeah. I would say he killed him for over a thousand. People. I mean, but it, took, <laughs> it took him a couple of decades. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy, and it's an important one because it establishes the origin, and even most of the origin's still intact today. So that's impressive. Right. On. Yeah. It wasn't terrible. It was, I don't know, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on with this Napoleon guy. Yeah. it's A lot of it just happened really fast, I think, was one of right. the things for me. It was kind of, it was really good. Still, I, I liked it a lot. It just was kind of, things happened quick, and it was like, oh, I we're feel in the like, next scene, the next one. I feel like this one might have been thrown together just to get the origin story in there, because the next one takes place after the last one. The well, next maybe the, the next one wasn't ready. Oh, that's a possibility too. Because I do, I, I I could be wrong, but I know some of the DC writers were having trouble getting their stories out on time. Okay. I don't know if this is one of the, this was one of those cases, but this one might have been already done. You know. Right. And just kind of okay. This was our backup. We threw it in before our next one. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense continuity wise. Right. Yeah. All right. I think that's it for this one. Yeah. I don't yeah. That's all. All right. Go ahead, Uncle Chris. Are you going to ask me for the joke this time? See, you're starting to like my jokes. I think no, you're starting I to like just, my jokes. I, I just accept the inevitable. <laughs> uh, what would you use after you use your Batman shampoo? What? Conditioner Gordon. Uh, <laughs> uh, goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <See ya. laughs>